Hello and welcome again to another unboxing video. Today we're going to be looking at the HP NV X360 15-inch convertible laptop. This is the 2020 edition with the Ryzen 7 uh, CPU. Uh, this one has got the 4700G processor which runs at 2 GHz base clock up to around 4.2 GHz uh, boost. I'm looking forward to this as the Ryzen processors, the 4000 series especially, has got very good and solid initial reviews so far. Um, unfortunately, we don't have the time to look at the performance of this laptop in this video, um, but I will be making another video shortly afterwards um, to look at its gaming capabilities, um, its drawing and slash um, artistic capabilities and um, everything else. So without further ado, let's have a look around the box. Um, as you've seen there, pretty um, minimalist. There's nothing in the way of graphics, which I like. Um, it just basically tells um, someone who's bought the product that it is targeting a much more premium market um, as opposed to, let's say, the previous X360 NV versions. Um, there's a tab there which is quite useful just trying to pull this laptop out um, the first initial impression I have was it was heavy um, it, it, it's it's not a light laptop that you probably carry around whilst walking but at the same time it gives you that level of um, feel that it's well built and made up of, of quality materials um, so there's nothing much in the box itself apart from this other box here which I think are the accessories um, so just struggling a little bit to take it out um, I think you will have the pen and the adapter in there but let's get rid of this box first um, as there's nothing left in there but yeah um, Compared to Microsoft Surface devices that don't come with um, pens, I, I think it's such a good um, feature to have a pen included on what is supposedly a touchscreen slash a pen compatible laptop. It just makes sense. Um, I guess for Microsoft's business model, it adds an extra source of revenue where you have to buy a separate um, keyboard and, um, and pen in that sense but hey there are fans of that model and I am not so sure about it myself so there's your adapter pretty tiny actually it's not it's not much bigger than the Dell 9575 2 in 1 that I have um, well, actually, this is smaller by the looks of it. Um, the port there is just your normal sort of like port adapter. I was hoping that they would just integrate this into your USB-C port, uh, i.e. through PD or something, uh, something like that. Um, just to minimize the number of required types of connectors you need on the laptop itself and at the same time if it was a USB-C PD port you could use it for other things um, apart from just using it for power but there's the box for the pen um, you'll probably see me struggle just try and get this open in a bit but I'll, I'll cut through that so to save you guys from pain and suffering And here you go, just a slightly more convenient cut. Uh, you measured it actually took me about 50 seconds to get this thing open, but here we are. Um, so in the back of the case itself, you've got a small, really short uh, USB-C charger cable, which is nice, um, given that most of the other, um, let's say, Microsoft and Dell pens offerings 
um, requires batteries um, rather than a chargeable um, sort of integrated battery. I guess it's got its advantages and disadvantages, but I think we should all move towards rechargeable batteries just for the convenience of it. Um, there's your few extra nibs. I think there's two in there. Um, and I think this would be your user manual. It just gives you a few feature sets and what you're supposed to do with it and whatnot. But yeah, we're not going to test it this time, but because um, what I usually do with my uh, drawing laptops um, is that I put a protector uh, layer on the screen itself just because I'm a bit paranoid with scratching um, the glass which is never going to happen because glass is much harder than plastic nibs um, but hey you can never be too careful so let's put that back in there for now until the next uh, review when I'm going to try and attempt to um, you know uh, draw something that's remotely um, artistic but I'll save that for the next video which is going to be a more in-depth review of this laptop so if you watch carefully I'm about to do a very complicated magic trick and something disappeared from the table and here's a laptop let's go back to it it's quite nicely sleeved by this plastic cover. Um, I kind of had to sort of like cut it because when I first attempted it I was like well actually I could just unpeel it from one side rather than unpeeling it from all sides um, and then just slide it out and that's exactly what I'm doing here right now just sliding it out. So for those guys who will be buying this laptop I've just taught you a new technique first impressions yeah still very heavy um, but in a good way you know it, it feels of quality um, and the texture is something that's familiar with other high-end products uh, that I have which is a good thing so on the left hand side you've got your HDMI cable three and a half millimeter jack a hidden tuck away USB port and a USB-C port. Uh, I think that's a PD port as well. I'm not so sure now, but we'll check it out. Then on the right hand side you've got your SD card reader, a USB-C port and the port for your power. I was hoping that that power port was another USB-C because that would have been more useful than, you know, just another power port. But hey, I really like that logo. Um, it's minimalistic and the way that the light sort of hits the um, laptop itself, like I can't do it justice. Um, it, you've got this matte metallic, not really black, more of a gun metalish with kind of reddish tint. I don't know. I'm going to try and uh, look at it under the sun tomorrow if it's sunny uh, and I could probably update the description down below or in the next video. So let's get rid of that plastic out of the way and have a look at the innards for now. Uh, you've got a nice plastic cover there, slightly sticky, recyclable by the looks of it. It's got a recycling logo in it and two very ugly stickers for the processor and the GPU. I detest these stickers because they just look so tacky on such an expensive laptop. I mean this is not even the most expensive but still you expect that to not be there. Um, which can be easily removed so it's not that much of a big problem for me. But I wish that if you know, if manufacturers really wanted to put these kind of stickers that they could design something that's a bit more less visually obtrusive. So I'm just folding it out on its tablet mode. It feels very solid. The hinges and that click is a good click. 
I don't know if you guys heard that because I was talking over it, but it, it felt good. It felt similar to my Dell 9575 2-in-1 as well. So, so far, very positive initial impressions from me. Nothing that jumps out in particular as of yet. So let's turn this thing on. Um, there's a really nice, funnily placed fingerprint sensor just by the arrow keys on the right, the right, the left arrow key. Wow, you can just see that pattern on the top there. It looks fantastic. I think it looks even better in person. I don't think the video does it justice. I guess the reason that I'm surprised is the fact that I guess your main competitor would be the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 or the X, which are both are not fully fledged laptops because it has that flimsy type cover thing. So to have something that's solid, almost Surface Book wise, to be at this price point, um, it's nice to it's nice to see. And I think it's the kind of laptop that I would be proud sitting in a coffee shop knowing that people are looking at it and asking themselves, what is that nice looking laptop? That Not that I think people look at laptops that way. Unless, of course, you're an Apple fan and you see the Apple logo and you get all excited down there. But that's just me. There are some really nice minor details in this laptop that you really have to go up up and close to it to really appreciate it. Hi there. I'm Cortana and I'm here to help. A oh, little sign there, in Cortana. here, a touch of Wi-Fi there and we'll have your PC ready for all you plan to do. Use your voice or the keyboard along the way and if you'd like me to stay quiet, just select the little microphone icon towards the bottom yes, of your please, screen. Yes, Cortana. Anyway, so I guess at this point I'm just going to continue on setting this thing up and we'll cut very shortly to um, looking at it from a desktop perspective, um, mainly because of the fact that one of the sticking points when I was trying to buy this laptop was the fact uh, that it was advertised as a 250 nits brightness screen. Um, so far it hasn't disappointed, it's currently afternoon and there's enough lighting from the window and from the room and so far I don't think it's that dim so let's have a look as you've noticed it might look a bit dimmer in the room but it's not it's just the way that I've adjusted the background lighting so that we get a better view of the screen uh, i.e. the camera focuses on the colors and the contrast better so let's have a look and enjoy the next few minutes. You guys may have noticed that there was some artifacting on the recorded video, but I assure you it's just the way that the camera sensor is capturing LCD footage. It was crystal clear and crisp from my perspective. I even walked around the room to check the angles for the IPS panel and it was pretty good. The only negatives that strike me at the moment is the gloss mirror-like finish on the LCD panel which is a bit of a problem when it's a bit bright in the room that you're working in because it then starts acting like a piece of mirror but I'm hoping that when I install the plastic screen protector that it would reduce that mirror like finish. So I also took the liberty of just quickly checking 
the CPU temperatures and you could see that it's currently averaging around 60, 62 degrees. Uh, a peak of about 86 was also observed, which is kind of high, but I'm not surprised. Again, this you, we won't be able to sort of determine what the thermal performance is until we really do a stress test. So we'll save it for the next video, which we'll go into an in-depth testing. Um, but also at the same time, the clocks look really positive. Um, they seem to be hitting the 4.4-ish boost um, clocks, which is nice to see. I'm just looking further down. Uh, you can see the GP temperature is around 54 degrees centigrade average whilst playing YouTube. So once we start playing games on it, it's going to be a different story or just using a graphics intensive application. Again, these are indicative, but not final. So one last thing to point out, I guess, is the fact that this is a high performance chip. It's bound to generate some heat. So the fans are currently uh, working in the background as I'm speaking. Um, I've muted the video so you can't hear it, but it's there. It's not intrusive. Um, I don't mind it, uh, given that I use a desktop PC, which is much, much louder. So for a silent solution, I guess this is not for you, but for a high performance laptop, it's working as expected from initial impressions anyway. But we'll have a look at that in depth in the next video, as I've said. So for now, we're just going to conclude it here. So thank you for joining me. Hope you've enjoyed the video. And if you haven't liked and subscribed, please do. I would really appreciate it. Even better if you have comments and suggestions. But for now, take care. See you next time.